Hey guys, um, sorry I wasn't paying attention, we're live. So, um, we are going to talk to director James Fox, Fox today. He made the iconic uh, documentary The Phenomenon a couple of years ago. And yesterday he premiered with Moment of Contact about um, multiple witnesses who saw a UFO crash in Varginha, Brazil. And some of them actually saw uh, what looked like extraterrestrial beings walking the, uh, around the streets in that town. Um, it's an incredible story. I saw the documentary. Um, it, it was pretty mind blowing. Um, I enjoyed it a lot and I have a ton of questions for Mr. James Fox. Um, I've interviewed him last year and um, he's a very, very cool guy and I can't wait to talk to him. Uh, yesterday his film premiered, they went number one on, on iTunes, which is incredible. That's it's an amazing, um, that, that must be amazing for him. Um, so he's running a little bit late, he's probably hungover, I would be too. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, we'll just wait for uh, Mr. Fox. I can't wait for him. Look, I see you, my friends. How are you guys doing? Um, well, this is for me. Um, after more than a six month break, the first episode of, say, my second run on UAP podcasting uh, covering this. And um, as I've uh, mentioned before, I had a rough couple of months, uh, but I'm ready. I'm ready to to rock and roll once more, and uh, I hope you guys are uh, are ready for the first episode of S2 season two. Cheers to that! Got my wine. Hmm. And look what I see popping up. That looks like a very familiar face. So, without further ado, let me introduce you to Mr. James Fox, director of The Phenomenon, and now Moment of Contact. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. How's everything going? I'm great. You gave me a little bit of a scare. <laughs> because... <laughs> I gave myself a scare. <laughs> okay. Well, um, but uh, thank you for being here, James. Um, uh, it's an incredible honor. Um, how was last evening? I can't wait to hear everything about it. You must be so hungover. <laughs> it was spectacular to see, you know, one's work on a big on a big screen with good audio, with a, with a, tons and tons of people in the theater. It was very very rewarding. It was a, it was a it was a. a, a Sort of once in a lifetime experience, quite honestly, and I felt like I was watching my own film for for the first time. Okay, so walk me through this. You've worked on this uh, for for a couple of years, I I can imagine. Mm. Um, you've seen uh, a lot of people. You spoke to a lot of people in uh, the town of Virginia, Brazil. Um, when did this uh, story first? come to you how did you find out about this account of uh, 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 this UFO crash this UFO and so anybody who knows my previous works I, I was working in the late 90s on a film called out of the blue one of my producer partners I had two Boris Zuboff and uh, another gentleman by the name of Tim Coleman and Tim pointed out to me and again this was probably 1999 and he said we should look into and potentially cover this ufo crash that happened in virginia brazil where this thing crashed and these beans were seen in the town and i just dismissed it so quickly like i did, <laughs> did you like, like like that okay i never gave it another moment's thought because i said there's no way this happened hmm. Fast forward 2000 and I think it was 2011. I'm going to Brazil. I had just finished two years earlier, a film called, I know what I saw. I worked with a woman named Leslie Kane who helped break that story on the front page. We know Leslie. Yes. And, um, 
I get a phone call. I was going to Brazil and I was going to talk about my movie. I know what I saw and just about my general experience making docs on UFOs. I go to, I was about to go to Brazil. I get a phone call from a gentleman named Jeff Sagansky and you can look him up. He's quite high up on the food chain in the entertainment industry. I think he used to be head of Sony Pictures, but in any case, and, uh, and he's been very influential in helping me behind the scenes. He said, James, you're going to Brazil. You have to look into Virginia. Right. And I said, sure, Jeff, I'll, I'll look into Virginia, you know, click. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So um, because, I, I don't know why I just I just had this knee jerk reaction that it just is impossible. Anyway, I went to Brazil in 2011. I met a couple of witnesses at the conference, just coincidentally, by chance, and started to look into it. And 12 years later, we made a film called Moment of Contact. And now, I'm, wow. obviously, now I'm convinced that app. I wouldn't waste 12, 12 years of my life and put my reputation on, on, on the line if I didn't think it, it, it happened. <laughs> well, um, now let me ask you this. Uh, when you first heard about uh, this account, uh, you said you immediately disqualified it. But did, was that before you heard about the Rua Zimbabwe case? I dismissed that one too. Wow. <laughs> and you know who I heard about that case from? I don't know. No. Steven Spielberg. You're shitting me. No, I'm not. No. I was just naive enough at the time to think I could get an interview with Steven Spielberg. I had we had a mutual friend in common by the name of Janet Yang. <clears throat> wow. and, I, and I asked Janet to see if she could help facilitate an interview with, with Steven Spielberg. Of course. You know, Stephen's like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. But you should tell him uh, if he's making a documentary on UFOs. And th again, this was like probably 97. Yeah, yeah, probably 96, 97. And, and Steven Spielberg told Janet to tell me about this landing case that happened in Rua, Zimbabwe. And of course, uh, I, you know, I should look into it. And of course, I didn't believe that either. And it's so, wow. funny. It's so funny because... You'd think that, you know, someone like me making a film on UFOs, you know, I believe in UFOs. And of course, there's an intelligence behind the phenomenon. Yeah. I would be open to that and at least ask some more questions, at least look into it. No, <laughs> I was not. Didn't. Okay. No. Um, so this is funny. You said that this was, this was 1997. You heard about it. And the 96, the, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, the uh, Virginia crash was in 96, right? Yes, January twentieth, nineteen ninety. Oh, January nineteen ninety six. Yes. Yeah, I got January twentieth here. <laughs> well, twentieth uh, is the day the girls saw the creature, but the, right. the, the gentleman Carl Tosauza saw the uh, UFO in distress and crash, prop on the morning of the thirteenth. I believe it was the morning of, of January thirteenth. Wow! Wow! Um, so uh, you started to get uh, an interested interest for for this uh, account, the, the, these witness accounts. Um, did you know about the case before you made the phenomenon? Um, about Virginia? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, so I was actually going to include, I did a lot of shooting in, in, in South America, in Brazil, for the phenomenon. And I was right. going to include the Virginia case as one of many cases featured in the phenomenon. <laughs> And we I worked with a translator. I put together a nice little segment. And probably after eight months of working on it, I just hit the delete button and wiped it all out. And I said, this is not going to fit in the phenomenon. It can't fit the phenomenon. It's, it's a big story. This is a standalone film. So when I finished the phenomenon, I thought, I've got unfinished business. And that's why we went back and, and did Moment of Contact. Wow. Now, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Priscilla, for your uh, support. Um, let's move to the movie. So when you started to talk to the people of uh, Virginia, um, of course, you were, um, uh, uh, let's say, skeptical at first. You, you told me you dismissed the, the, the whole story skeptical when you first heard be, about Skeptical would be putting it mildly. Right, right. Okay. I dismissed it like this. Like that, like Literally. that. <laughs> and so you, you made your way uh, to, to that town. Now, uh, you must have started talking to 
one person, two people. Uh, so when was the moment you thought these people are non-deceptive, this might have actually happened, and what the hell was it they encountered here? I would probably say... I've never told this. I don't think I've told this story before. I don't know. Do we have time for me to get slightly more in depth on something or? Yes, please. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. So I was working with uh, a TV show called, it was a stupid, silly TV show for National Geographic. And we were in Brazil chasing down this case a little bit. And I, we were out at night doing silly stuff with cameras that we shouldn't have been doing. Um, but that was, anyway, that's another story. Were you making a board? I was bitten by a spider oh. uh, in, the, in, the, in the forest. Um, and I got taken to the hospital. And the relevancy of this will come in a minute. I got taken to the hospital and I was up all night and they thought it might have been the Brazilian wandering spider because of the two fang marks on my arm. And the Brazilian wandering spider is deadly. So they had to put me on an IV drip with a, a, a anti uh, 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 venom. Wow. So I was up all night. And the next morning, having not slept at all, the crew for National Geographic program that I was working on um, were like, we're going to go, we have to go shoot, we have to stick to this rig rigorous schedule and, you know, all this other stuff. I've been up all night. I'm on camera talent. Like, this is ridiculous. I got bit by a spider, you know. At the very least, I need in downtown. We were in downtown Virginia. I need to get out, and I need to get a, a, like a smoothie, like a smoothie drink, or like a mango smoothie, something like that. Something to comfort you. And everyone was like, "We don't have the time. You can't do it. Stay in the car." And I just got out of the car and did it anyway. I didn't care. All right. And so I went into this little juice store, and I had a. That's one one thing that's lovely about Brazil is that they do these fresh juices just about everywhere you can do it at a gas station or you know so i get this lovely fresh juice made and while i'm in there there's a guy um talking with he just brought up conversation young guy probably in his i don't know 30s and he says um he says what you know what, what are you doing out here and i told him i said we're we're looking into the Virginia, you know incident he says well i know one of the witnesses, one of the women that came into contact with this creature. And uh, if you like, um, I will uh, I'll, I'll make a phone call and see if and make an introduction. And so that's how I met. That's how the first opportunity I had to meet with the girls, one of the girls. And then we ended up getting all three of those witnesses to come forward and, and talk about it. And that, to me, because you don't have one testimony, you don't have two testimony. You have three witnesses. At the same time. At the same time in broad yeah. daylight. That's incredible. I mean, within 10 feet of this strange mm. being. And it was a sentient being. It had feelings. It was, it was cowering. It was scared. Uh, it was helpless. Um, and I just believe those women. I, I just absolutely believe those women. Yeah. So, you know. And that was kind of that was a, a bit of a turning point. Let's put it that way. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, the the most compelling statement to me uh, was Carlos in your in your documentary, yeah. because uh, he was just so emotional and and it looks like he's still kind of carrying a burden or something. You know, uh, when you took him to to the the crash site, mm. he kneeled down, started weeping. Mm -hmm. um, what went through your mind when you when you you were just going with it? I could tell, you know, you were just like, oh, you know, following him around. Was it here? Was it there? You know, you was looking for for the site, and um, it, it was like he, he almost forgot the cameras, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that made it it's so compelling. Um, well, you know, it's funny actually because so none of the witnesses in moment of contact approached us. We had to dig deep and hard and long to find. Carlos had got off the radar. He'd completely vanished for 26 years. Marco Leal, my co-producer, uh, he and, and some fellow Brazilian researchers found him and slowly 
developed a rapport with him and got him to come forward. He had no intentions. He probably would have never, ever made another statement on the case ever. And when we got out there 26 years later, Carlos couldn't find the crash site. We were looking around. No, he couldn't find it. And I remember thinking, boy, this film is off to a bad start. But this guy <laughs> watched this thing crash and he can't find it. You know, and we we're running all around. And I, and, I, and, I, and I kept saying in the field, I said, Carlos, how certain are you that this, like, you, you, you talk about this little white house. Like, how certain are you that you could see the white house and the impact site in the same shot? And he said 110%. So I kept looking for a little white house, but trees had grown up. So I took the drone out and I flew the drone over the whole area with the camera facing down and I spotted right. a white house. And that's when we led, you know, down and that's 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 when we discovered that's when we discovered the actual impact site. And it was you, all caught on camera, it nothing was staged, it happened exactly the way you see it, and it was a very powerful moment. It was a very powerful moment, and so now I understand actually you found the site. Uh, in retrospective, you know, uh, years later, but Carlos recognized uh, yes. the site. Yes, yeah. because so. I kept saying, like he said, the only thing he was absolutely adamant about was that you could see a small white house from the site. That small yeah. white house had a bunch of trees that had grown up that you couldn't see it. It was hiding behind those trees. Anyway, anyway, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so <clears throat> there, there are a lot of questions I have because the the, the three girls. Um, their account of of their their witnessing uh, these these beings uh, is very detailed. Uh, mm -hmm. They were scared. Yes, they, they were scared. They smelled very bad, and they were oil. They had oil like skin or something, right? So brownish, yes. darkish, um, and this is pretty contradict contradictory to uh, the account uh, we saw in your other film uh, the phenomenon that looked far uh, like far more superior beings huh? they, they they could uh, communicate telepathically they um they, they had, were in uh, control rua the, the the entities were in control of the situation in virginia these entities were not in control of the situation now now james uh let me ask you this do you think these these beings in in um virginia were the same beings uh, in Rua because because they no. were no, no right no mm -mm. in fact I've never heard of anyone describe me personally I don't maybe other researchers researchers have I have not I've never heard of anyone encountering these beings uh, no these, these no, they, are... they almost they almost you know when, when you hear the the, the the statements they they almost seem like anim, animal like or or pets or something you know it's like uh, the dog ran off the plane you know they 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 act scared uh, you know very primitively they don't didn't seem very smart to me uh, in you know in contrast to to the rua uh, account so what could that be is is do you think it's like like an inferior being but not from this earth that they encountered well, you know, uh, the one similarity is I asked the women in the field, and this is how we came on, the. Uh, this is how I discovered the title of the film. I said, during that moment of contact, when you locked eyes, because they made eye contact with the feet, right. right? During that moment of contact, was there any type of communication? Did you feel anything at all? And that's when she said it was communicating to me that it was scared, it was vulnerable, it wanted um, help. Uh, it okay. wanted help, yeah. And okay. so um, um, it, that was the only parallel that I could find in terms of there was a type of sort of telepathic, there was some level of communication when they made eye contact. That's, that's the only thing similar with Rua. Other than that, there's nothing, it's completely different. They were, like I said, they were not in control. They were, they were cowering, they were scared, they were vulnerable, they were weak, yeah. according to the way. Right, right. Um, so uh, eventually a couple of police or military men uh, uh, physically captured uh, 
one of the beings, right? Yes. Um, now, he got sick. He got very sick. Um, but my question is because, you know, uh, when you look, at, look in, the, in the documentary, these, these beings were taken to a hospital. That means doctors and military men must have <clears throat> been very close to them, maybe even touch them. Um, but in this documentary, there was just one account of a, of a, of a, uh, a military man or a policeman that got ill. Uh, do you know if more people fell ill uh, when they were in contact with these beings? Not, I, I don't, I, not that I know of, not that I know of, not that I know of. But uh, from what I understand, Marco Cherisi, the military uh, officer who died after capturing this being, he got a yeah. scratch like here on his arm. Right. And it's, uh, they thought that maybe it, the nail scratched him or somehow he got scratched during the process. Right, yeah. And yeah. he got this infection. The doctor said he threw the kitchen sink at Marco. He gave him every type of antibiotics and his body wasn't responding. He'd never seen an immune system failure like that one of a 23-year-old healthy young man and, right. um, and couldn't save his life. Marco, Marco died. Wow. That, that's horrible. Now, the, the other thing that, that uh, stood, stood out to me was um, these, these doctors that treated the, these beings. Um, what happened to them? Uh, well, in the film, uh, we had discovered a doctor who probably took x-rays of this. this creep. He didn't come directly yes. in contact, but it was in a black zip, zip body bag. He saw a foot, right? Yeah, well, yes, there are doctors that saw a foot. There are doctors that saw the whole thing. Um, um, you know, look, no one person that we met with had the full picture of what happened. Everyone had a slight piece of the puzzle, and we put those pieces together, and it shows a story that of, of, of a crash and beams, okay? There were some yes. doctors. There were some people that were involved in the transportation from the, as a military base of these beings, of these creatures. There were doctors that claimed that they, they saw these beings in the, in the Humanitas Hospital, in Legionus Hospital, and um, uh, doctors that claimed that they took x-rays of what would, could only be thought of as one of the creatures that was, that was deceased, um, all done in secrecy. So... Uh, Yeah, there was a lot of involvement. Most of the town of Virginia either saw something, military presence, military blockades, knew someone who saw a creature or saw the UFO activity or whatever it was. Um, and I hope I'm not going on a tangent here, but the nice thing about this case is that it happened in 1996, so the vast majority of witnesses are still alive. Yeah. Yeah, which is incredible. Now, James, uh, one of the witnesses said, uh, I, I think it was one of the doctors or military men who were in the in the room where the the, uh, the deceased being uh, was. Uh, apparently, someone was filming that. Now, uh, this must have been a military guy. He had a camera with him. Uh, do you... Is there uh, a way... Um, uh, it, that you can recover that footage or, or uh, are you onto it or w would you know who has it? Um, we have made it quite clear publicly in Virginia that there is a, a extremely large cash reward for the footage. <laughs> and we know it's there. Yeah. And um, there's, you know, there are things happening. It'll, 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 it'll either happen with us or it'll happen with someone else. Either way, I'm pretty convinced that it will be coming out at some point. I just don't know what which point. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure you're going to get it. <laughs> you know, well, we'll fingers, <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, uh, you know, even with, even with the footage. People are going to say it was faked or it was CGI or, sure. you know, there's going to be people that just don't believe it no matter what. And that's, that's understandable. 
but um but it would be nice obviously to have photographic proof no no question about it and we're doing everything in our power to make that happen yes yeah um so um the other thing is um people who saw the, the people actually witnessed the, the ufo uh crashing right so they, they saw something was wrong in the sky um or and when it crashed um there was some white uh smoke white smoke right yes it was like a white vapor white vapor white. yeah now i was thinking could this thing uh have a propulsion system because if if, if something came out uh, because th usually the, the UFO uh, sightings, the thing that stands out is that they don't say, seem to have a propulsion system, right? They, they, they move around on something else, gravity maybe. Now, do you think there was a propulsion system on this thing? Well, I mean, it was flying, so they had to have something. Right. But it didn't make any sound. It didn't have any wings. It didn't have any controlled surfaces, according to the witnesses. It was yeah. shaped like a cigar. It was right. the size of a school, like a little larger than a school bus, a big school bus. Um, and uh, and it didn't make any sound and it flew, it had the ability to sort of hover and fly very, very slowly without controlled services or anything else. Okay. Um, so there was exotic material recovered, um, but... Um, did, did any of the, 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 the local people recover any of the exotic material? Because I can't remember them uh, telling about that you know, in the film. That was, that was something. So um, we, we interviewed, and if you look at the, if you, if you watch the film all the way through the credits, mm -hmm. you'll see testimony from uh, a military ex uh, who was at, as a military base. We, confirmed all that we have all the photographs of him at the base in uniform all of that and he was not directly involved with that operation but his friends other people were but right. i have no idea what exactly was recovered apparently there was a field of tinfoil material it was quite similar to the to, to what the witnesses at roswell new mexico in right yeah yeah described. yeah described and then but but there was a large part of the craft that was still intact according to the witnesses right according to this. and um what what happened with that i just haven't a clue one thing that people asked me fairly recently and i don't know if you've you've clearly seen the film we we do a um an aerial shot of the alleged impact site with right. the drone. And if you look carefully in the film, you'll see at the alleged crash site where Carlos claims that this thing came down, you'll see overhead that the ground looks different. The earth right. looks molested 26 years after the fact. I would love to dedicate some time with a geologist and some metal detectors to go back to that site and really spend a significant amount of time looking for any residual debris. And maybe it's there. According to some people, they say, I don't care how careful you are. I don't care how professional you are. If there was an incident or an impact site, there will still be evidence of, 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 of that material there. That's something that we'd like to follow up on. Definitely. Now, <clears throat> a lot of the witnesses were harassed by uh, the military. You know, all of them, uh, all of them, all and, of them. and and once more, uh, the, the harassment were, were threats. They 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 made a they they tried to shut them up, uh, or maybe brainwash them. It wasn't what you thought you saw, um, but it seems like nobody nobody could unremember whatever they they saw there. Um, do you think uh, the Brazilian military is? Uh, in possession of, of, of that crashed uh, UFO and, and maybe even uh, in, in possession of these alien bodies. Or, as uh, uh, was mentioned in the film, did the Americans fly in and they just transferred it to the Americans and now it's in the USA? 
It's, I, I would say with 99.9% .9 certainty that the Americans came in and, and got the bodies in the brief. That is what I was told by every single military witness that we met with. Okay. So and they even had the flight controller that saw the, the plane come in and land. So very compelling evidence that the Americans were involved. Very, very. We, sh we should definitely ask Lou about this. <laughs> But uh, um, let me see. Well, um, yeah, that's yeah, for sure. But uh, I'm sure that if, if, if Lou was exposed to any of this story, uh, that would be classified at the highest levels. Sure, for, for sure. sure. Because for this sure. is the definitive. This is the definitive proof. I mean, beans in a craft. That's what the whole world is waiting for. And I Definitely. hope I hope this film encourages more witnesses to come forward. I really do. I, I have no idea what happened to this. Uh, I don't know what happened to the story once the Americans came, became involved on the 22nd of January and out, out went that airplane. Uh, the, the trail went cold. Wow. Wow. Um, so let me see. Um, do, you, do you think... Um, there were multiple UFOs uh, in, the, in the area because usually um, what I've heard is, is uh, there, there's like a, a rescue attempt or, or, or something, you know, um, or let's say that, that that's what humans would try to do, uh, you know, get your, get your people out. Is there any count of that? It's really funny because we rented our house from uh, in the town of Virginia that had a, a security checkpoint and we had a lot of gear with us and professional you know, drones and cameras and tripods and sound design, you know, equipment. And so we rented our house from a, a, do a doctor who had a nice kind of uh, vacation home that he would rent out when he right. wasn't using it. His friends found out that we were in town shooting a documentary on this incident. They said to the doctor, we saw the entire family, a UFO in January of 1996. So we were thinking, great, let's go interview this family that saw the UFO either in distress or crash, right? That's what we were thinking. Right. But when we showed up to the family's house, not only did they not want to go on the record, they thought, no, 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 no cameras. We just wanted to tell you what we saw. We didn't, we did not go on camera. I convinced them to finally go on camera. The whole family, they all saw it and they saw it for 15 minutes. And they were describing theirs late in the evening on January 20th uh, as, as a UFO, like a disc that was looking for something. Right. Okay? Right. So I said, well, how do you know it was looking for something? He said, I looked at it for 50. We all looked at it for 15 minutes and it was doing like a kind of a grid search. Okay. Like sweep. Yeah. Yeah. So I shot drone footage at the capture and the encounter with the girls. Right. So we're looking at this drone footage. And all of a sudden we said, now, wait a minute. Where does this family live and where did they live in 1996? Well, they lived a couple blocks away from the encounter, okay? So, turns out accidentally, coincidentally, I shot footage of the from the air overhead of the capture spot. Yeah. The encounter spot and this family's home all in one shot. Yeah. So, we were in the studio and it was almost like this revel, this moment where we all looked at each other and went, those guys were looking for their people. Right. It has to be. If you, yeah. if you take their accounts uh, at face value, which of course we did, these guys weren't selling their story. They weren't out there trying to go on camera. I mean, these guys were, this was a whole family. They saw it for 15 minutes. Very credible. So we concluded in the film and a lot of people don't don't get that but we concluded that, that there were it was a it was a recovery mission wow thank you jml by the way well uh yeah the, 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 it was mentioned in the in the film of course 
Um, kind so, of. You have to fill in the blanks a little bit. Kind of. Right, 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 right. Uh, so these X-rays that were done on these uh, on these beings. Uh, any idea? The, 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 do the, does this radiologist, you know, have like like maybe? Is there something left of that, or or is it totally would, completely taken away by by the uh, by the military? Wouldn't wouldn't that be nice? He said that it was the only time in his entire, uh, in the history of, of of his employment at that hospital that he could not not only not look at or keep, but he, he, they wouldn't even let him look at the X-rays to make sure he did it right. They the right. military took him off and told him never to talk about anything. Wow. And oh, he, didn't, he didn't. He didn't for years. In fact, Marco Leal, my producing partner, uh, and boots on the ground in Virginia, um, he found that uh, X-ray technician about seven or eight years ago, and yeah, he said, "I'll never come forward. I'll never come forward." And then he retired, and Marco kept kept at it, kept at it, kept at it, and eventually uh, he did come forward. But but he but he said that they they left with all with everything. Wow. Um, so, uh, do I have two seconds to grab a glass of water? Of course, sir. Let's let that go. Two seconds. I mean, two of seconds. Yeah. No worries. Wow. I, I. This is such a such a great documentary. Um, but it also, you know, um, opens up a lot of doors. I think um, because James got so close. You know, uh, there there's all kinds of elements that he can pursue or whoever can pursue. It's like there's footage, um, there's there's material. Um, we there's a possibility it went to the USA. Sorry, I was just filling in uh, the silence a little bit. Yep. <clears throat> Things that came up uh, in my mind. Um, so, James, yeah, th th this immediately sounds like that there has to be a follow up on this, right? Because you've opened so many doors now, like the footage, uh, the, the, the people who've witnessed that there might be people who have are in possession of some materials or photos, maybe, even though it was 1996, you know, you had like these throwaway cameras at the time, but maybe not in Brazil. I'm not sure. But what do you think? No, no I, I tell you with 100 percent certainty, there's photographic and videotaped evidence of the creature. No question. 100 percent. Wow. So that's 100 percent. And and how do you know? Because I, I can imagine if you got hold of that, you would have shown, right? We know. I, I promise <laughs> you we know. Yeah. OK. Um, I guess there's there's a lot of fear in, 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 in what's going on, right? So people so think of it this way. The witnesses that were directly involved with either the transportation or capture are terrified. Okay? Of course, yeah. Terrified. I'm telling you, I've never seen anything quite like it. So these military men, they really put the fear of God in, 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 let, into let, these... Let me finish. Sorry. The wit no, it's okay. The witnesses are terrified. Some of them came forward reluctantly because we were trying to get them to, you know, for, quite, for years. Now, that's just to tell their story. Now, imagine how a witness that would not only tell a story, but also has physical evidence along with that story. Yeah. People's, people are terrified. I mean, that's, that's, that's the holy grail of evidence. And, uh, and they have, I think, a legitimate, um, uh, it, it's they're, they're, they're legit a legitimate fear of coming forward and sharing that that evidence it, it's it's real you know what i mean so in other words I'm, i guess what i'm trying to tell you is that people that were directly involved with the incident uh are terrified to come forward and share their story a lot of them did it from filming their backside blurring their faces disguising their voices but these people that have the actual physical evidence are terrified yeah i can imagine Remember, it's not just the brazilians like if the Brazilian government reveals what they know and what their level of participation, in my opinion, it would also expose the Americans. Now, do I understand that actually also people, witnesses disappeared or military disappeared after this incident? Uh, disappeared in not the sense of, of being killed, but were relocated. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
relocate. relocate. Yeah. Okay, so relocated means they can be located, right? Yeah, uh, good point. Actually, I'm not sure. No, I, I, gone. They just yeah, they they were yeah, they're gone. Just gone. Yeah, I mean, they were on the assumption that they were relocated. Okay, Nobody so we, we, all these witnesses were killed. Nobody said, said that. They just said they were just relocated. So let's say the, the official statement is they were relocated, but nobody really knows what that, what the hell happened to those, those people, right? They 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 were gone. Yeah, just gone. Gone. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so, were you in any way um, terrorized, or, or or did they try to sabotage whatever you were doing uh, in uh, while making the footage? by the government or police or whatever? Um, what spooked me, all of us, we were A, we were threatened when we went to Eric Lopes's house, the driver of the car, allegedly in the in the second capture. Yeah, he threatened uh, to shoot you. Yeah, threatened to shoot us multiple times. Yeah. Um, but, we had interviews lined up with other people at, as a military base to meet with them. Yeah. The military base as a, was making calls to the witnesses that we'd either just met with or that we were about to meet with. Okay. And that spooked us a little bit. Then they said, uh, you know, just call and check in. Want to make sure you're still living at the same address. How's your family? Oh, and by the way, there's an American film crew here. Have they reached out to you? Have you spoken okay. with them? Questions were asked. Do you still? Yeah. And so that was, to me, that was kind of spooky. Yeah. That did was you spooky. ever? Did you ever feel we left? Uh, we just. I, no. Nobody threatened me. Nobody said anything to me. Nobody called me. Nobody sent me an email. But we were, we were, sick, seriously spooked and. And, you know, it was time to go. Now, I see a great question from the, the audience, from yes. uh, Gabriel Arkari. Um, Ask James if he were in contact with someone in the UAP task force during the produc production of this documentary. Regards from Sweden. Hello, Sweden. Yes. Um, and thank you for your support, sir. So, uh, James, th this is a great question because did you try to verify whatever happened there uh, through your American uh, yes. sources and channels. Yes, I did. Yes. And? <laughs> uh, and um, one person said that smell, uh, that smell that everyone describes, because everyone described it, was so for like yeah. a, 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 a self-preservation. It was a, 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 a defense, defensive, mechanism that uh, like a skunk like a skunk exactly that that, that excretes when there's fear of danger or something like that that's right what one person from the task force had shared with me after they watched the film and um but they didn't say like oh well this is where the debris is or this is where the bodies are that that was that one comment that i heard yeah right so, right yes I, look again. This is just a first step, you know, launching this to to really shed some light on this case and find out more. There are a lot of unanswered questions, stuff that Definitely. we would love to know. We would love to know, but of course, it's look. The Roswell story had twenty, thirty, forty different documentaries, profiles. You know, people prying <clears throat> into. Uh, this is just a first step, and and I'm hoping that it will encourage other witnesses to come forward. I'm hoping that uh, some Americans' involvement, people that were involved with this case, those folks would come forward um, at some point. And I'm hoping, obviously, that people with photographic, videotaped evidence will come forward. And the uh, the reward that we have for that is, is, is significant, and I, it's very very quite significant. Now. Did did your production team? I guess they did uh, do a uh, Brazilian equivalent of a of a FOIA request uh, on this case. Other people have done those equivalent of a FOIA request, and 
Claudio Covo, one of the Brazilian UFO researchers who's now deceased, his daughter, Cynthia, had documentation that she shared with us that was kind of like, well, this is why the Americans were there because they were uh, trying to figure out, it was a document. I, 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 in right. fact, at some point I thought I, I thought that document was in the film, but it probably isn't. I don't know why if it got cut, but, but it basically what it was, it was an official document that said, the reason why the Americans were there is because they were uh, trying to find a Brazilian astronaut that they could bring into NASA, something like this. Right. And, you know, and that's just why they were there on the 22nd, something like this. Uh, so to answer your question, other people have the document that was produced from the Brazilian uh, government suggests that the reason why the Americans were there is because they were doing something with NASA and trying to get some um, find a Brazilian that could be working with NASA, something like this. Right. Um, so if you look at all these cases, right, because there's the, you have the Rua case, you have Roswell, you have now Virginia, there's many more actually. There's the Australian case, uh, what is it, Marga, Marga case, I think. Um, so that uh, worldwide, th they're not very often, but there are like like a dozen uh, of these uh, encounters. Now, James, <clears throat> I'm sure you're you're gonna look into all of them. Um, is is there a way that if you like put all of these cases uh, next to each other, uh, you are going to look for let's say patterns or um, you know, uh, let's see, uh, or maybe a reason why why these visits are happening. Is that something you are looking to to uh, pursue? You know, Max. After all the investigations and all the places I've gone to, China, Australia, Africa, Brazil, Europe, uh, Russia, I feel like I had known less about the phenomenon today than I did 29 years ago. I get it, I get it. More questions, right? More questions, more questions. And I've come, I've kind of come to terms with the idea, which is kind of sad, I mean, a little bit, that I'm just never gonna know. Look, sometimes the journey is better than uh, the climax. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's kind of like a bummer, you know? It's like, God, I was, Really hoping that I would have some answers. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Oh, I'm just like, I'm not going to know. But James, a question to you, right? So yeah. we have all of these cases, right? The, 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 what, what came out in the New York Times with the, 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 the US military pilots, Fravor, uh, um, you name them. Um, if you really, really look in whatever is on the table right now um why is it that throughout all of these decades there is not one really good piece of footage or or a, a really good photograph or 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 what do you think is is, is that because of the the authority authorities are so uh, uh you know hell bent on, on 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 just taking any evidence or any footage or or is it just bad luck or or what the hell is going on do you think mcminville oregon 1950 paul and evelyn trent one of the best photographs ever taken of a ufo you've got a broad you've got multiple photographs in broad daylight two witnesses with a camera, a crystal clear picture. Uh, so, and then you've got uh, Rex Heflin in 1965, Santa Ana, California, three or four Polaroids, crystal clear, in focus, broad daylight. Um, so periodically, I know it's not as often as we'd like, no. good photographic evidence coupled with multiple eyewitness testimony appears right oh so we obviously we'd all like more of it and you know that these types of things disappear more than they appear so but there are some right. out there. there are some out there i mean look at the evidence that came on the front page of the new york times that that uh, cockpit footage 
of that tic tac you know right. what people don't realize is like or maybe they do they don't think about it you've got photograph you well you've got eyewitness testimony from four navy pilots yes you've got radar confirmation from the ships yeah. you've got radar confirmation from the airplane you've got photographic evidence from the the cockpit recorders and uh that's boy that's that's a lot of evidence yeah they didn't catch it so they don't have the actual so-called tic tac right but you've got radar confirmation ground to air air to air you know visual confirmation and photographic confirmation that's a pretty good case Pretty good case, huh? I think uh, so. You, what more could you get? So, James, um, there's one case that it, 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 it it's decades old, but it's you must have heard about the Italian uh, crashed uh, UFO uh, just before the Second World War. The we call it the, the Mussolini UFO. Have you ever heard about that case? I have not. You have not. No, sir. I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, look, I never thought I would report on you uh, alleged UFO crashes. I just sure. never thought that was a place that I was going to go. And okay. I know that I'm putting my reputation and credibility a little bit on the line for this film. And you know, uh, but we all do. Uh, but no, to answer your question, I don't know about that case. I, I literally don't know about that case. Okay, so allegedly. Um, the Italian military, just before the, the Second World War, uh, found out about that they, they saw a UFO crash. Beings were seen. There was communication with the beings. And apparently um, Mussolini uh, was still having good relations with, uh, with the Americans. Again, donated everything to America. <coughs> but um, the rumors are that... Um, th that is actually uh, one of the crafts that is in, in uh, Area 51 or, you know, S4 or whatever uh, you may call it. Um, so it is something to look into, I guess. Um, but you were talking about Russia. You went to Russia. Now, the, the, what, what sticks out to me in Russia is, look, there, there is this footage on... on uh, on the internet by uh, this Ivan guy and you see this footage of, of uh, uh, what they call an alien called Skinny Bob. Uh, it's been debunked, it's, it, but there, there's people who say, no, it, it, you, know, it, you, you can't uh, do that with special effects at the time it was published. Have you, have you ever looked in, in, into the case of that footage or is that just um, a really good special effects effort? You know, I think there's I, it, it, interesting you brought that video up because I've had people bring that video to my attention on multiple occasions. And one man requested that I show the video to the Rua witnesses, which I right. did. I said, does this look anything like what you saw? And they said, yes. Wow. So. We got to know the origins. We got to know where did it come from, who shot it, or who created it, if they created it. And I, I, my understanding that we don't have those answers. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, it, 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 there, there was a KGB sign in 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 the footage in the in the, in the frame. That means Russian Secret Service at the time, uh, but Russia because they of course have nuclear weapons there's a very sad situation going on today between the russians and uh, and the ukrainians but russia seems to be like a a place to really look into because they are like the second world power to 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 have the, these uh, weapons of mass destruction and they're seems to be a pattern of of these things showing up at those places right mm. when you were in russia did you ever looked into that pattern like like the, the 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 nuclear thing i did not george knapp did i did not i he didn't did, know yeah. i didn't know about it when i was there but i tell you the interesting thing that happened to me when i was in russia 
and that uh, that that trip I took to Russia is in a film called Out of the Blue. Right. When we showed up to interview former military folks, I thought it was really interesting. It was the late nineties, and they said, "If you're here to ask us." Whether the phenomenon is real, the door's right over there. Right. Uh, what, what, <laughs> what, what? What do they mean? And basically what they, were, what they were saying was, you clearly haven't done your homework. We're here to talk about the implications and hopefully open up an international, <clears throat> hopefully open up an international dialogue with America and others to share information uh, about the, the phenomenon. Wow. Uh, which was amazing. I mean, in the 90s, I was like, Wow, that's fascinating. You know, it is fascinating. Yeah, you know, we're not going to talk about whether the phenomenon exists. If you don't know that, you haven't done your homework. The door's right there. Yeah, and and uh, and like you, you've you've traveled a lot. You've investigated the subject a lot. What countries uh, were the most interesting to you uh, regarding this subject? All of them. All of them. All of them. I, I really mean that. Fascinating case in, in, in cases in, in Australia, fascinating case, you know, in, in uh, Zimbabwe, yeah, uh, Canada, there was the Falcon Lake case, I think it was 65, I'm not sure the date on that one. Um, Russia, you've got a case of, of a close encounter of the third kind, uh, Meng Jiao in 1994 in the Black Forest of China. An alleged face-to-face uh, -face with with beans and a and a ship. Same exact message was given to the witness as was 1994 in Africa. Um, you know, uh, then you got Brazil. I mean, there are great, great cases all around the world. Absolutely yeah. fantastic cases. Virginia. Very bizarre, very puzzling, different, you know? Yes, um, definitely. Different, just different. And why? We don't know. I mean, it, Jesus, I wish it would, I wish it fit in better to the other cases. I wish it was more consistent in the sense of, you know, similarities or, you know what I mean? But it's not, it's yeah. different. And yeah, it is what it is. Now, <laughs> now James, um, before you go, yes. Um, is there something you are looking into that has blown your mind and you uh, are, are sitting on, or, or maybe you can like uh, show us a little bit of the tip of the iceberg uh, that could be even more uh, compelling than uh, your current uh, documentary? I'm. I am Joe Public. I am a citizen. I I'm, am just like all the rest of us that just wants to know what the bleep is going on. Okay. Yeah. 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 I share the vast majority of information that I get in the field with the world. I'm very right. transparent. Okay. In fact, the only time I wouldn't share something is because I feel like I don't have enough evidence to back it up. Right. It's the first time that I've ever reported on these alleged men in suits, these dark suits that show up and intimidate witnesses. I heard Majestic about 12. I heard about these guys 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago. Right. And I never included the testimony in and out of the blue. I know what I saw, like the phenomenon this time. I did. Um, for my next project, Max. Oh my God. I want to know. Cool. Yep. I want to walk the halls of Congress. I want to know what's known today, where the evidence that we know exists is, and who has the authority to release it. And that right. is going to be probably my sole objective. Um, for my next film and I'm starting wow. next. I, I, I want to know. I want to yes. know so badly. People say to me like, oh, where's the photographic evidence? Where is this? Like, I, you don't think I want it? 
You don't think for a moment I'm going after it? Like, of course I am. Now, James. Everything I can. Now, James, a, a question to you. Um, like, I've been covering this, this subject for over a year now, year and a half. Uh, you've been covering it much longer. Uh, but it seems like uh, there's a slow drop of information being shared. And it seems to, almost seems to have a purpose. Like, like, like there's, like, it, it looks like awareness is being created through small podcasts or huge directors like yourself or or, or whoever is has the balls to, to, to cover this subject because it's, it's not easy to cover this, you know, in, in my country, whenever I cover this, when I started out with this, you know, it was like uh, committing career suicide or something, you know, people were, they thought uh, he, he went crazy. Why would he, would he do that? But for some reason, this slow drop works um, because I covered it nationally in, in a written media, uh, but also through a podcast. I, I'm working on something with footage, but um, and, and many people are doing it now. Also, the Dutch national newspaper started to cover it seriously the last year. Um, and it is because, you know, there, there's this wave of people, you know, who keep on sharing this information like yourself, like me, you know, and we share it with each other. But also skeptic people, you know, they they have to look into it now, you know, they, they're looking at it. Um, but I do feel there's a, a couple of people who are on purpose like giving little bits of information to create some some form of awareness and it's it feels like it's going to be more and more and more and i heard a birdie whisper to me that uh, early next year something is uh, gonna going to pop um but do you think i heard my theory i heard, I heard something big is happening at the end of this month that's what i heard but this month even yep hmm. Okay. Uh, somebody from the task force said, I don't think you realize how perfect your timing is. I don't know. I don't, I, I, I don't know anything more than that, but we'll see. We'll see. Right. Okay. Well, that sounds like amazing news. And um, I think we're all excited uh, for that. But do, do you concur with, with my theory or do you, do you agree with well, my theory? Well, so I have to remind people that the reason why we had that article on the front page of the New York Times mm -hmm. regarding a secret Pentagon UFO program right. is because a couple of guys on the inside decided that the world needed to know. Right. They walked evidence out of the Pentagon and on onto the front page of the New York Times. That's why it happened. And they found a loophole. They bent the rules. And uh, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Right. So there are some on the inside that clearly I'm told that don't want this story out. And the reason why because you cannot expose what you know without exposing what you don't know. Right. So the governments can say we have unequivocal, concrete evidence that the phenomenon is real, whether that's bodies or a craft or whatever. However, if you don't know origins and intent you're exposing your vulnerabilities. And I don't yeah. think every, any governing body wants to do that. So that, well, I am told that is probably one of the biggest reasons for secrecy. I do think so because it would compromise your vulnerability on the subject and you don't want to lose face, I guess, to other nations or something like that, you know? And maybe this is why they why nations are not so keen on sharing information, I guess, with each other. Because if, if nations would like cooperate and, and share information, say Russia and America or Great Britain and France or all of it together, 
and let, let's say centralize all of this information, um, you know, people could really get into it. What do you think? Is, is there a lack of communication between nations on this subject? I don't know. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes on that. It, it, it is interesting from all the cases I've, in, I've investigated from Tehran, South America, Africa, Australia, that there mm -hmm. is Belgium, France. I mean, the list goes on and on and on that there is a, a presence of an unknown government agency, primarily from the United States that shows up to investigate, conceal, intimidate witnesses, um, um, so that so, is an indication to me that there is some level of, of international communication because how else would they know about it? Right. But I don't know. I just, I don't know, Max. I really, I, I just don't know. Yeah. So you, you said you were looking into this uh, Majestic uh, 12. Well, I wouldn't Let's... say Majestic 12, but I'm looking into... M Men in Black. <laughs> well, I know, I know. It's got, a, it's got a lot of baggage, that whole, you know, that's why I avoided reporting on it. Um, uh, I, I got to a point in my career after 20 plus years of ignoring these so-called MIBs or these these people that show up in dark suits and intimidate witnesses. Mm -hmm. But again, I was in uh, Brazil and and these accounts were were seemed valid and legitimate and and, and these witnesses were seemed honest. And I said, okay, I can't avoid this anymore. I'm going to report on it. I'm going to, I'm going to allow, I'm going to provide the platform to allow them to say what happened. So let's, let's play uh, devil's advocate, right? Mm. Um, you know, the, 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 the Portuguese Fatima yes. encounter, right? Yes. People uh, disqualified as some religion, religious uh, mass hysteria, right? Yes. Um, last century. Now, is there, of course, you're very skeptic when you when you look into like a like a case of the Virginia case. Were you thinking, well, okay, is there a way that people might have wind, wound each other up and, and this could be mass hysteria and they started believing their own bullshit or something? Um, look, if I look at your documentary, there is no molecule in my body that doubts that they, these those people saw what they saw. No, nothing. Because you know they they they're they just have no reason to be deceptive. They don't gain anything from it. You know, it, it could even be embarrassing to believe in this or whatever you saw. But did that ever cross your mind? Like like I I have to see if this is 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 a mass hysteria case. I mean, of course, I didn't even want to cover it. I didn't believe it myself. Yeah. And again, you know, there, there's no one witness that you're going to meet with that's going to have the full picture. You know, this is what yeah. happened, and the military did this, and the crash, and the. Uh, everybody has got. Uh, I say everybody. There are. There is. A preponderance of compelling first-hand eyewitness testimony from so many different people, different walks of life, military, civilian, doctors, you know. Um, and that's what makes this case so extraordinary is that it's recent enough where there's the vast majority of witnesses are still alive. Yeah. So, so no, I wouldn't, I, no, I absolutely wouldn't consider this a mass hysteria. No, no, I wouldn't. But I was prepared to dismiss the entire case. <laughs> No, but but look, by the way, let me congratulate you on your documentary. It's an incredible piece of work, you know, that there is so much love and, 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 and blood, sweat and tears put into that. You know, you, you can tell by watching that, you know, the, the way you shot it, me as a documentary maker, I know, I know what you did. <laughs> you know, it, it was like, for example, to me, it was the carlos footage you know you you just went with it you know you you went with your instinct you went with your gut it it, it was a great piece of 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 
a great display of actual actually documentary talent. So I'm I'm taking my head off to you, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you, Max. That was that that, that, that was that was cool, and I hope you win lots of awards. It 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 was quite it was quite a was it was quite a film, really cool. Um, thank you, Max. I appreciate that. I really do. I, you know, so, and I, 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 I've already seen a couple of reviews which I anticipated that was happening, where yeah. People are like pretty much all right. This guy's career is over. This is ridiculous. This obviously didn't happen. Of course, yeah. You know, so I, you know, I pushed the envelope with, with the phenomenon, uh, and 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 we survived. I'm pushing the envelope a bit further with this one. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Now, I understand you went number one on iTunes on your premiere night. Now, how did that feel? Really good. <laughs> really good. I, I, yeah, I know. It, 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 it's, it feels really good. I mean, it's number one right now. It's still number one. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, that, James, that's all the validation you need, my brother. You know, that is... I, I, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? That's all yeah. I can say. We'll see what happens. I know that I'm going to be ridiculed and laughed at, and that comes with the territory. I get it. But I just ask people, I, I completely understand the reluctance to even think that this is an event that happened. But I just ask people to suspend judgment, listen to the firsthand eyewitness testimony, and draw your own conclusion. Definitely. Well, it's almost biblical, right? First, you will get ridiculed. Then you will get. Then the people will get violent. Maybe, then they will believe after. I'm not so, trying. To get, I'm not trying to get people out there to join my cult of believers. I, I really hope that's that's not my intention. Never was my intention. It's just to put the evidence out there for people to draw their own conclusions. That's it. Look, if it's not a question of whether you believe, like, because people go, "Oh, you're a believer." I'm like, well, no, I, I would probably call myself informed, <laughs> you know, it's right, like you right. know about something or you don't know about something. Right, right. Oh, no. So last question, James, um, you said Spielberg put you on uh, to, to the to the case, right? Rua, Rua to Rua. The Rua case. Yeah, the Rua case. <clears throat> now, oh, and first I, of I, all, I dismissed that. I know, right? I know. But first of all, incredible are you, you know, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. Second of well, all. Personally, I, he, he knows of me and I know obviously him, but all he right. relayed that message through Janet Yang, our mutual friend. <gasps> ah, yes. right, 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 right. Now, Stephen but is Steven, known. But Steven Spielberg also gave me a quote from the film I did um, uh, called I Know What I Saw. Right. And that came through Larry King. Hmm. And I have that quote and I have a letter from Steven Spielberg about my movie. And Steven Spielberg's publicist begged and pleaded with me not to release that quote. Oh, okay. whatever. So, so, yeah, not, so now he knows, me, he knows my work. We've been in contact and we've been back and forth with publicists, but I have not met him face to face. Okay. And now I can't hear the quote, of course. You want to hear it? Yeah. Oh, he said. Uh, he said he found my film compelling, and that while he bases lots of his films on ET related cases, something like this, he himself yeah. had never seen a UFO, and he felt that that was really unfair. He then <laughs> said, "I hope that the government will disclose." The, 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 the true nature and origins of this phenomenon sometime soon. Very best, Steven Spielberg. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Of course, like, um, if, if you think about this film, what was it, the uh, Third Encounters of the, what, what, the, the... Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yeah, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Sorry. <laughs> um, so... The, the, if you if you look at that film and and whatever Lazar uh, was was saying about whatever he saw, you know there there were. It, it's clear that that Stephen did his homework, right? You know he, oh, he, he listened. Had, he had Dr. Jalen Hynek in the movie. 
who investigated UFOs in an official capacity. Hold on a second. I got to check something really quickly because sure. um, um, I, I've, I've taken way too much of your time. So oh, no, it's OK. They have me on a, on a pretty strict schedule here. Um, and I have to check out of the place that we're in um, in very soon. So so OK, let me let me uh, finish up with you. Yep, yep. I'm so so sorry. you can uh, go on your on your. Have, uh, yep, go for it. Yep. All right. Um, so um, I was I lost it. You want to wanted to know the average you, if I like sunsets, right? Yeah. No, no. no. If I like sunsets or or sunrises, right? <laughs> yeah. Or walks on the beach. Or walks or, on the beach. <laughs> yeah. You like pina coladas. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, James. Um, Thank you for your for your latest uh, latest film. Uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I think it's going to open many 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 doors and it's going to create awareness and people who want to know more. Yes, sir. I can't wait for your next uh, endeavor. And um, next, thanks for having me on. I I, I, I appreciate. It. I have a call coming in that I'm so sorry to be rude, but I got to take this call. Go. Yep. Do your I thing. Will, I, thank Enjoy. You, thank you so much for having me on. And, uh, and thank you for your interest and your time. No, thank you, sir, for your uh, great work. And uh, no, à la prochaine. Right, à la prochaine. <laughs> Guys, um, thank you for watching uh, my first episode of the second run. Uh, it was, to me, it was a, a great conversation with this uh, incredible director, James Fox. Um, and... Uh, well, again, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna continue with my uh, my evening. Amsterdam dance event is right on the front door. So I'm gonna have some fun and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. By the way, um, let me know what you like would like to be my second guest uh, or my new guest on, uh, on the Masquerade show. I love you. Talk to you soon and uh, goodbye from Amsterdam.